Hello and welcome to the latest in my series of In Conversation Pieces. Today I'm joined by a fantastic angler and a man who's putting more than his fair share back into the sport, Simon Mottram. Hi Tom, you right? to see you mate. And you mate. Right, I want to start by asking you about your roots in the sport. How did it all start for you? Well I was quite lucky, I lived um, about 200 yards from a canal mm. um, where I used to live in Wixall, back in Tropshire. And next door to a field, there was um, a little pond, and they used to call it the pit. And then uh, that was full of carp and little stunted rod and stuff like that, crucians and everything like that. So I started fishing in the pit before I went to the canal. I was only like eight or nine years old, eight, eight years old, I think. And um, like everybody catch small rod and stuff like that. And um, like eventually started going up to the canal, but could never really catch a lot out of the canal. Could always go in the pit and catch. Hmm. And um, the first thing, well, after a while, it sort of went as probably everybody did then years ago. Like they went to the local tackle shop, hmm. which is in which it was in Whitchurch, Ken Warn, Warner's Fishing Tackle. It was called. Yeah. And um, so my mum and dad took me there, like, and he said, "Well, the, what you got to do?" Which all the kids around there, they all joined a club called Grinley Brook Angling Club, hmm. which um, was based like the other side of Whitchurch. And they had um, two stretches of the canal there. And um, so I'd, I think it was about, it would have been April, May time I joined. And it was when there was a closed season. Like, mm. So I've got my little club book, you know, card, and then there was junior matches in there. And I always remember sitting there looking at this book. And in the back was the, the list of the matches and the trophies and everything, the junior trophy. I think it honestly thought, perhaps being a bit big headed or whatever, but because I'd only fished on my own. And you always win on your own, don't you? You're always the best, sort of thing, Mike. Right? So I looked at these and I thought I'll probably win most of those. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, I rocked up at the first match and caught like always. Remember, we said the the matches on a Friday night, and there'd be like twenty or thirty kids there, mm. and probably the same adults as well. So mm -hmm. big, you know, Friday night match, sixty people there, sort of thing, like. And um, I've never fished against anybody any, before, like. So I remember catching like. A daddy rough and a gudgeon or something coming last <laughs> and watching all the others weighing their fish and thinking it was just blown away with it all really yeah and then um i found out it wasn't just a club as in just the matches they had like coaching sessions and stuff like that and so got involved with that um and like uh, you know your fishing just got it seemed to get better every single week so we'd have like um Friday night match and I think they used to have um, like a coaching session on a, like a Saturday afternoon mm. where you'd go and learn about ground baits and it was all foreign to me it was all because I'd all had really been to this the pit by our house where you just cast in and catch a little rud and yeah. didn't have to feed or anything and that like so big learning curve like so so after a couple of years fishing the junior matches it was getting half decent but again it was all about a progression somewhere else so um there was a link between a, like a Nantwich club called the White Changlers. Mm. I don't think the club's there anymore, to be honest. And um, progress into the White Juniors. Like they amal amalgamated two clubs mm. with a view to putting a team in the Junior National, mm. and which was at Milton Keynes, the first one that we trialled for. And then there was like, I think there was sort of 60 or 70 teams of 12 or something like mm. that. So it was a big match, you know what I mean? Like, but we had trials. There was like 15, 16 kids in for this, you know, for this to get in the team. Probably mm. 20, probably, actually. And so we had a trials and everything. It wasn't just one trip. It was like we'd go and fish matches, like inter-club matches against them and stuff like that. So they finally pick a team of 12 for the mm. Junior National. It was Milton Keynes Grand Union, it was. And luckily, I ended up getting in the team. So, but it was like really traditional. Then you go there on, on a big coach, and like section coaches. Each section would have a coach. You know, you know, it was just unbelievable, really. And funny enough, it baking hot day. I remember I drew. I can picture the peg now. It was behind Wolverton Works at Milton Keynes, like a factory opposite me, and fell in halfway through. <laughs> and, and like stewards had to drag me out, probably in tears and all that, like and that. But yeah, it was good, good. And so we had a few years of fishing junior nationals. Um, I think the second one we fished might have been, it was Milton Keynes, then the River Witham, um, then Trent and Mersey Canal rings mm. a bell, 
and then eventually we end up on the Staffs Worcester Canal at uh, Penkridge, that sort of area. Really. Yeah, quite local, but obviously living in the country and that everywhere it seemed like it was a million miles away, like so yeah. it was. And we eventually, I think the best result we have, I think we were third hmm. on the Staffs Worcester Canal. And, you know, it was just a different level again, you know, like hundreds of kids there, it was a massive match. So, obviously, we, there was a big junior scene then, there was like, not just the national, it was like Northwest junior matches and stuff like that, there was a lot, lot you know, it was a good, mm. a lot of junior matches, big junior matches as well, they were, like, they were, mm. so, yeah, so eventually, but it was like, after the, Grun, as well as the Grunley Brook thing, mm. there was always, there was, I remember John Ellis there, he was saying, oh, you need to join, like, some other clubs in Whitchurch that had Sunday matches. Yeah. Like, but then the the junior scene was dwindling a little bit. There was, like, lots of seniors on the club matches, but not as many juniors. Mm. A few, but not, not loads. So I joined, the first club I joined, I think it was Whitchurch AA. And I always remember it was like, they had some lakes, big lakes, um, the Sheaf Pool and Fens Bank Pool. Mm. Never fished on anywhere like that before. Mm. Remember my mum taking me like and the great big lake. Everywhere look when you were a kid, everywhere looks well, massive. Massive, then yeah, you go back it's... and it looks tiny, doesn't it? But um arriving at this port, again another learning thing, didn't catch a lot to begin with, but you slowly sort of get better. Yeah. And like a progression thing and it was a big thing then, it was like moving from club to club. Mm. So we did the Whitchurch thing, then it was like the Rubri Owen Club. Yeah. And they had a they had a fun their stretcher canal was right by our house. You could walk there like. So it was a good Mm. you know you could go there and practice and stuff like that but it was you seem to be improving all the time like tenfold like just by fishing with better anglers than yourself yeah. all the time like it was I think it's it's a must to like fish with better people than you absolutely I, I, you know I always I mean? believe that if you you know and if you're winning everything at a level you, yeah you should really be the next level it was like that with the clubs you sort of started winning not mo well quite a lot of the stuff mm. so it was time to move to the next club like yeah and then, so it was at the time then when clubs sort of started, not, they were sort of doing, so it was then it was time to move to teams and stuff like mm. that. And, and like, in between, there was, um, in the summer holidays, there was only be about 15-ish, I think. Mm. I took part in, um, there was a local shop, um, another shop called Shrewsbury Bait Centre. Mm. And they run like a junior series in the summer holidays. Like well supported in that tackle firms getting behind it and stuff like that and it was good. It was like um, they'd have like say I think it was a Thursday I think um, like a five week series then a final at the end mm. big you know big thing and through that I did quite well in that and through that I got um, the Shrewsbury Bait senior team asked me to fish yeah so I joined them so I had a good few years with them. Um, I got to about 20 like and I ended up working in the shop like which good experience you know quite a timid sort of an 18 19 year old you go to work in a fishing shop and you're like you know you just got ripped to pieces and that you're the butt of all the jokes but yeah good grounding I think though I think it really sort of brings you on and absolutely yeah yeah it was good though it was um so a few years with the shop Um the shop closed down eventually like but I was really, really lucky as well. I was tucked under the wing. I've always been tucking under the wing by better anglers. Like the, mm. there was a chap called Tony Lloyd who used to take me everywhere, like winter leagues. Yeah. He used, you know, he used to pick me up. Never asked for any petrol money or anything like. And yeah. he'd take me home and pick me up and stuff like that. And and we'd always like a big culture of going back to the drawer and that after the results, having a drink and stuff like that. Like yeah. you know, be. I'm not sure what age I was then, like, but. That was like from like seventeen onwards. That was, I think, and but just great, just going back to these results and just soaking it all up and yeah, a few pints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your mum used to say, "Have you had a drink?" And I said, "No, I've had four. Like you know, what I mean? like, <laughs> but no, good times though and that. And eventually, like I said, the shop closed down and um, like the match group sort of dispersed mm. and that. And I joined another team after that. Um, like the life, lifestyle team, I think it was mm. WB Clark Lifestyle then. Yeah. Um, had a good few years with them. I think it, um, the captains were then Paul Murrin, he was captain. He still fishes all the time mm. now. I think he won the pairs last year, him and his yeah. partner Dave, like good friend. Yeah. And um, a chap called Mark Shepherd, he didn't fish anymore now, but they were the two captains. Mm. So um, fished with them for a few years. Um, 
good, you know, on the local canals and stuff like that, and different matches, you know, Super Leagues and all sorts, and good, you know, real good attending matches. And it was probably about five years with them. Um, and we had, a, I think we were second on Division 2. Where was it on? It was on the Staney Canal, but it wasn't at, wasn't at Thorn. It was, where would it be? Scunthorpe, you know that end? Crowell end, yeah. Crowell, yeah. that was yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot more weedier and lots of fish. Really oh, yeah. good. Is it a great, great bit of water? Yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, I think I had about five years with that team and eventually joined Drennan North West, mm. um, Steve Conroy's team. Like, So obviously that was like a you know, fishing with some of the people I'd read about and fe- yeah. as a kid. And Top two, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I still fish with them today. Like, And we had, um, I think the last national that we fished, we fished on the Shropshire Union Canal with Drennan North West, Division 1. Third we were on it, so mm. that was you know, a great result. Like, And, and then we'd not fished... Um, we didn't fish many nationals after that. Mm. And then the other year, I think the last one this year just gone, Division 2 come up on the Shroppy again. Yeah. So some, but just all friends from around, we amalgamated a team together, Crew Match Group it was called, because mm. um, some of the lads were from Crew, like, and we actually put a lot of work in. We had, you know, really good time in that and everything. And yeah. like, there was one lad from London, he, Tony Cassidy, stopped here a lot. Yeah. So we had a real good sort of time at the, you know what I mean, and put a lot of work in, we actually won, Brilliant. which was a really good result, and, you know, we put a lot of work in, like, so, good draw as well we had, but... Well, it doesn't matter, you're a good draw, don't you? Yeah, Whenever yeah, you yeah, it, so... It's interesting, mm. I mean, I've always sort of, growing up in a different part of the country, and, you know, I've always followed match results and read about anglers mm. and stuff, and, you know, um, your name has been synonymous with top results on canals in particular for mm. as long as I've been fishing. Um, you know, I remember reading about matches in this area and you always did well. And I want to ask you, because, I mean, it's interesting, I always think, ge- geography, different areas of the country has different angling cultures. Yeah. Bit. And this area where we are here, along with like the West Midlands, you know, it's narrow canal fishing scenes. Mm. Brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Um, who do you consider to be... Um, and you can't name yourself because I put, I'm, I'm already saying you're in this list. But who would you say the top three now at Canal Anglers are? What, past and present or, or just past all? Past and present. Yeah. Um, in the past, it Chapper doesn't fish anymore. Like Ian Moulton, very, very good. Yeah. He was one of the original blood with him then, wasn't he? Yeah, he was just... I drew next to him as I was coming up the ranks and I drew next to him a couple of times. just blew me out of the water, like, you know what I mean? And mm. just had presence on the bank as well, like just... One of them who was just very hard to beat, very confident in his method and that. And I suppose he was a leader, not a follower. Do you know what I mean? Like he yeah. was, yeah, um, yeah, very hard to beat. And doesn't fish anymore now, you know, but yeah, really, really good. Mm. But, you know, when anybody uh, always pops into my head, he does like, so yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, more present day, well, and for doing it for years, Paul Turner, like he's. Mm. We're very lucky, like, he organises a lot of leagues for us and stuff mm. like that, and, like, he won a match years ago. I always remember him, £108 a carp at Penderford, mm. Mm. and he's just, you know, done everything, you know what I mean, yeah. and won loads of matches, and he's put a lot back in as well, runs lots of leagues and stuff, mm. and mm. two-day events and stuff like that, which are becoming more and more now. There's a lot of two-day events cropping up, mm. um, you know, which is good. I like, you know, I like that sort of thing, mm. festivals and... Like probably my favourite week of the year he runs. He runs a festival in July. Probably for the last six, seven years we've been running that now he has. Mm. And some of my friends come over and stop over for three or four days and we have a good time and everything. It's good, really social sort of thing. Yeah. And, you know, I think that, like team fishing, it's a social thing, isn't it? Like, Absolutely. And, yeah, so. Absolutely. So, you know, Paul and Ian, um, and there's lots of good ones. There's lots of good ones. Um, it'd be unfair to name everybody, I think, but there's... So you're only giving me two. Only, only two, two, yeah. I can only right. give you two, yeah. yeah. So it's interesting, and Paul won't thank me for saying this, I have to avoid him, but it's interesting that the two people you've picked there are older. Mm-hmm. Um, how does the canal fishing scene strike you in terms of younger anglers coming through? It's definitely older, because I'm, like, I'm 40 now. And you're one of the young ones, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. There's not... Many of us, there might be a couple that are younger than me, two or three sort of thing. And, and the big matches, a lot of the matches we fish are well attended, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, 
a lot of league matches where there's 70 or 80 people there and stuff like that and mm. definitely in the like the youngest 10 me like so yeah I don't know it's a tricky one isn't it I can't see many young ones going through but you never know it, it, it might I don't know it's mm. It is in, in many ways a sad state of affairs, that, but it strikes me that you're a, a man of action with, with regard to it because you're actually doing something to, to get more kids into fishing. I want to talk a little bit about the work you're doing with John Ellis and the King Island Rivers Trust, specifically the, the Let's Fish campaign. Mm. How, did, how did that all come about? Well, really what we're doing is repeating what John did years ago with the Grunley Brook Club. Um, before he moved away, he was like a big you know, influence on us, coaching us and yeah. progressing and a lot of the lads that fish then are still fishing now so that obviously worked and obviously with his role in the Canal Trust and wanting to get more anglers mm. I think he's just, it's like I think it's relit the fire of what he w did in the past so yeah. and it's, and really we're just doing what what we did years ago that worked so yeah, enjoy it though, it's, it's good, you know what I mean and, and to be honest it's improved my own fishing, believe it or not, when I've been out coaching and explaining stuff and you sort of analyse yourself mm. more than what you did and definitely 100% improve my own fishing. Like, Just tell us a bit about what it does and how it works then. Right, what it is, they have, um, we organise like taster days, mm. sessions, we're working with like clubs throughout the country um, and I think you go online and you can book a time slot, you know, normally have like a half hour slot. Yeah. Um, and it's literally, you know, you could t you've never if you've never fished before, you can turn up and catch your first fish. Yeah. You know, we go about it the right way. You know, all the coaches are all like really clued up on the canal fishing and mm. that. So we don't, you know, don't get into the massive technic technical stuff and everything. It's just like, you know, try and do the basics first. And and it's nice when you when they want to come or they come back and stuff like that. You know, to, to the next event or they want to book on and it's good. Very yeah. good, like yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and the sport needs it, doesn't it? We need new anglers to sort of to keep coming through because I'm definitely one of the youngest on the matches, and and mm. at forty, you shouldn't be one of the youngest, really, should you? You know. No. no. I think the first time we met was at Western Pools about mm. probably eight years ago, I guess now. Mm. And you were actually running a memorial match for mm. Perry Dalgano. Mm. Obviously, a big influence on everybody who, mm. who touched his life. I mean, I, I wasn't lucky enough to know him, but speaking to a lot of anglers who did, a massive character in this oh. area. Just tell me. Yeah, about well, about I, I first met him in White Acres, actually, believe it oh. or not. And the, um, I'd be, I was working at the shop, so I'd only be about like, I don't know, nineteen or twenty, something like that, perhaps. Yeah. And I met him as you do in the bar at White Acres, you meet people, don't you? In that, and I remember him saying, um, "Got to, oh, I'm moving down to Shrewsbury yeah. in." Like four months he lived in London right. and he was moving down with his wife and his kids and that to um, to Shrewsbury mm. and I always remember I was working in the shop one day I was up this ladder getting some stuff out the like the loft thing and heard the door go and Jim who was the boss he was in the front of the shop and heard this cockney voice who was Simon about and it was Perry yeah and he would come, he'd come into the shop, he had a, you know, just hit it off straight away and remember Jim saying oh, go and take Perry down in your lunch hour and show him the river and that like we were gone like three hours sort of thing, like, you know, and yeah. showing him everywhere and but you know, just a massive influence. Fish with him for a lot of time and we qualified for the embassy pairs in Spain together and that, but such a character though and you know, really big influence on me fishing. You know mm. what I mean? Like it like I've always been lucky that better anglers have looked after me and shown but it, he was like another like where we'd we'd fish round our round near our way sort of thing mm. a bit. He showed like a London aspect of it, more positive than that. So it improved me fishing, no end, just being around him, you know what yeah. I mean? Like and Different style of angle. Different it? style, yeah, different, yeah, yeah. It, it, The way we fish was a lot different. I always remember his first canal match. Cause like he basically looked at all my rigs, he said, oh, they're rubbish all them, like they're not positive enough and all that and everything. And, um, and it wasn't always about positive fishing. It was, I think at that time, possibly the canals around here weren't quite as good as the London ones. Mm. Like, so it was, it was like that, but remember on his first canal match, you come and he won on the oak tree length with like twelve pound on squat sort of thing, and you know, and he's like, "Well, I told you and all that." It was easy sort of thing, like, and it was like yeah. unbelievable. You know what I mean, like? But yeah, brilliant bloke though. Yeah, brilliant bloke. Yeah. It um, 
another thing, and I might have misread the situation, but I don't think I have. But it strikes me with you, you like a pint. You're, mm. you're very much into the match fishing lifestyle of enjoying yeah. yourself, the social aspect yeah. to it. Do you think that's as strong now as it was when you first started? <laughs> it is on our scene, on the mm. canal scene and the rivers and that. Um, it definitely is there, mm. especially on team events as well. Like sometimes I don't always go back. I, you know, come straight home. Some even if I've done well, I've just come straight back. Sometimes like mm -hmm. keep the missus happy and all that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. but team events I always tend to go back. You know, because it's like it's just some more special about a team thing. I love team fishing to be honest. Yeah. And but all these two day events now, like, and you know, that's usually involves stopping away, and I just love that. Mm. I love stopping away and getting a group of anglers together and. You can just talk all night, can't you? Um, not my friend Danny Martin from Lee. He's um, he's organised a two-day festival in, I think it's end of March. Mm -hmm. and there's nearly 100 booked on already. Sponsored by Matrix and Lee Tackle. Yeah. You know, you know, really making a big effort. and But there's lots of lads that are coming and they're all, we're all going to stop away. I'm stopping at Danny's like with him and it'll be good fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'll all be... And there's lots of lads from everywhere coming and... It'll just you know, just be be good. Yeah, I do love the social aspect of it all, and yeah. you know, and you just don't want to go home some night. See, so like it's you could just sit there and talk all night, couldn't you? Like, yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. You're relatively young, forty, just just about, or just just, under. just forty. Yeah. Um, what do you want for the future? What's your ambitions? <sighs> like to win a Division One national. Never done that. Mm. Um, just ca I don't know. Carry on doing some like. I hope some more two day events will crop up and stuff like that. And like be, I think the ultimate one would be if there was like a canal fest organised. You know, like Dave Arrell's River Fest. Yeah. I th I, whether the canal fest will work, I'm not sure. I think because our matches are well attended and everything, that would be good mm. if that was, if that could somehow you know, get going that sort of thing and. Just keep and enjoying my fishing, really. You know what I mean? It's mm. I tend to just fish like years ago when I was tended to fish a lot more different places. Like we'd be bream fishing one week on lakes, feeder fishing, and odd bit of river, you know. But tend to just fish canals now. Used to do a bit of F1 fishing in the winter, like, mm. and last year I missed that. Like, we put a team in another winter league, so I just carried on on the canal, like, but yeah, I did carry on. I just, you know, I do enjoy myself, so I, so I just carry on. You take it as it comes, don't you? And just, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that sounds good. I mean, I suppose for you, it's all going to be about enjoying your fishing as well, mm. because you've mm. always been a, a big believer in that. Just tell me any funny moments that might stand out funny for you. Funny moments. Well, always one that springs to mind. When back in the day, I'd be about um, I don't know, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. And we used to, it was like a big bloodworm scene then. We're fishing bloodworm and joker most weeks on canals. Yeah. And luckily, where I lived in the country, there's lots of places you go and collect your own bloodworm. Yeah. And mum used to drop me off, believe it or not, you know, like in the middle of nowhere sort of thing, mm. and these farmers' ponds and stuff. And one Friday, well, she dropped me, me and my friend Chris off, Chris yeah. Harvey. And, like, used to go to school with him and everything, like, grew up together. And she's dropped me off. And she used to, like, pick us up, like, a couple of hours later after we'd finished, and, mm. you know, away you go, sort of thing. Anyway. One particular Friday, it had been free, it had been frozen like in the week and all sort of freezing cold, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And to cut a long story short, I've ended up in this pond and um, stuck, proper stuck, <laughs> as in like waders full of water, like can't get out. No. And I'm like, this, it, was a, it was like only that deep in water, but it was like up to there, all the silt and everything. Yeah. So I said to Chris, like, you're going to have to go and... Um, Go and ask the fight. He said, we weren't supposed. We were, hadn't even asked to be there. Do you know what I mean? Like we were like trespassing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you, you know what I mean. You were only yeah, only trespassing to get caught, aren't you? Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then he's like, so you're gonna have to go and get some help. You know, fifteen year old. You know what I mean? And mm. anyway, gets this farmer. Farmer comes out. And first thing, he's rollicking us. This, I'm in the middle of this pond. It's like a small lagoon, if you like. It wasn't just a little pond. It was quite a big. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this far he's brought this farmer and he's like rollicking me sort of thing. He says, right, he says, he said, if there's a professional bloodworm scraper that comes in here from Wigan. Mm. His name is Huey Allen. A bit of a nasty piece of work from what I'd heard. He said, if he catches you in here, I'll be the least of your worries. Anyway, he said, I said, I can't get out. 
I said, I've been stuck in there like for an hour now, like proper stuck, still yeah. scraping and worm while I was stuck. <laughs> and um, I said, you, know, you got a rope and it was just ending up getting, re- I just can't get out. So, um, so in the end, they've called the fire brigade. True story. Yeah. So the fire brigade have come out and police have come out, ambulances, all this sort of thing. Like, and um, my mum's rolled up. <laughs> like so she's dro- from dropping us off in this field yeah. she must have been coming down the road and seeing like fire engines ambulances all this C- bloke can't get me out of the pl- ropes and all sorts and that was proper stuck mm. so in the end this fire fireman's like waded out as far as he could before he was getting stuck floated out you know the, the pipe the tube yeah. the hose grab i've grabbed that and they filled it full of air and i've like come up all these bubbles and i've like the drag my man should drag me out wrapped me up in foil, took me to hospital, mild hypothermia, because I was like falling asleep in this pond. I was yeah. like, proper cold. Like. Right. Yeah, yeah, so wrapped up in foil like a big turkey like I was and whisked off to hospital, mild hypothermia. Of course, the the thing then, all the, you know, only a little kid, aren't you, sort of thing, like, and you're getting wound, all the seniors then, everybody, it's all got out, that they found <laughs> found this out. And all the anglers then said, oh, yeah, you, he's after you. He's going to do you and all this sort of thing. Like, yeah. And of course you believe it, don't you? And it seemed every match I went on after that for the next few weeks, Yui was there, like, and he, he didn't know, you know what I mean? Like, but, oh yeah, he said, oh, he's not happy. And I'd like avoid going in cafes and stuff like that. Yeah. And he'd be, he'd say, every corner he went round, he'd be there. Like, we rolled up at the cafe and Yui would be there on his breakfast sort of thing. And like, a couple of times I've said to like Tony, he was, oh no, I'm all right for a breakfast, Tony. I'll just sit in the van, not that hungry, sort of. They must have been in there laughing their heads off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I was going to say then, following two then. Ah, right, so, um, you know, I've sat in the car, not having my breakfast, and they're all laughing their heads off. And a couple of days after it all happened, um, Shropshire Star have rung up mm. the house, and, like, the local newspaper and asked, asked her, I didn't really want to say what I was doing and all that, and they yeah. go, putting the words in my mouth, they said, what were you doing? I said, well, they go, was it like um, you were helping the farmer? like clear the pond out like and I said uh, yeah yeah that's what I was doing anyway two days later on the front of the page half term um, task goes horribly wrong as if the farmer had employed me to work there oh no yeah serious <laughs> and um, like he's employed some 15 year old kids to go wading in this pond clearing it out and so god knows what he would have um, he would have thought when he read that like but yeah yeah <laughs> Looking at adults, Matthew. I know, yeah, yeah. News of but the world. It was in the news of the world. Um, th- there was a little clip. My mum still got it now. They and it was like a little clip in there, the news of the world sort of thing. Like it was crazy, like you know what I mean. And yeah, but I had some fun. You know, had some right funny stories. Like Perry again. Like we used to go to Holland on the Vaughan Canal, mm. and um, Pat who runs a festival. He he teamed us up with. It was us two, and like there was two other housemates, but we never met them before. We hadn't these two other housemates, but we'd like joined, you know, sharing a house together, like mm. at, on the um, is it Sister Romana? Is yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Still yeah, you that. go, don't you? Yeah, I do. Anyway, so we've got. I think we got must have got a night ferry or something, and we've arrived. Um, be like quite late at night, so we haven't met the other two. So we've yeah. gone in, sort of whatever with the bags and that, and gone to bed and that. Anyway, woke up in the morning. You can hear it was. Tell you who it was. It was. Um, Lee Kilmchuk, yeah. who was stopping with his mate. Is it Rob Johnson? John, is it? Do you know him, do you? Uh, I think I know him, yeah. yeah. Right, well, them two it was that he teamed us up with. Anyway, sort of, I remember waking up. I can picture it now. Perry's like, woke up like that. And he's like, instant, because he, he planned what he was. And he's like, right. So he's in his suitcase now. All his clothes off. Put the mankini on. Proper yeah. green mankini. I think you used to wear one of those, didn't you? Yeah, I've like tapping now. Yeah. So he's gone down, to the, down the stairs to these... Two blokes he's he never met before in his life. Mankini on and everything, and he's out. Oh, yeah, I'm pleased to meet you, Perry, and all that, shaking their hands, and they're, like, bewildered. Yeah. You know, and it just, like, real good fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it was proper giggle. Yeah, but it was just, like, it highlighted the fact that, you know, he's just, it's best just to... Have a laugh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it tickled me, though, always. I think we send it into, the photo of him, we sent it into Match Fishing, and Dave Arrow put it in on the end column sort of thing, and... Like Perry there in the mankini with this like surprised look in his face, like and that. But that was a funny though. Good yeah. times. Yeah, good times, but yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I always end these interviews with a 
contentious question, no. as you know. A, a question designed to make the person ask feel positively uncomfortable, do to that, be honest. You? You know, yeah. I, I'd like to make an exception for you, Sam, because yeah. you're a nice guy, but I'm not going to answer that. There's a process that I've been told about uh, by journalists called modification, mm. which is basically the training. Always cringe when he calls it that, I do as well. Well, yeah, it's yeah. a bit of cringy, mm. yeah. cringy saying, isn't it? I can see why. But, um, yeah, it basically you train um, the uh, Canal and River Trust coaches who might not be that experienced doing canal fishing and sharpen the skills. Mm. That's yep. a fair description, isn't mm. it? Yep. Um, and... It sounds like it's been a great success. Mm, enjoy those it's days, it's good. Mm. Absolutely. Well, imagine next year you were going to enter the um, Canal and River Trust Canal Pairs Championship. Right. But your partner has got to be somebody who's come through modification. Oh, right. Who would you enter it with? Right. Good question, that, isn't it? Oh, I'm devious. Yeah. Oh, you are. These. Devil. I lay awake at night <laughs> thinking of these. <laughs> Mm. Ah, there's a there's a chap who's really took to it on um he's from the Foxton Club. Mm. Is it Wellingborough and Yeah. Wellingborough Nino. Right? Yeah, a chap yeah. called Ian Halliwell. Right. Really nice bloke and and he's really took to it. Do you know what I mean? He's like you can just tell that he's like every time you see him fish he's just improved. Natural or, yeah, natural. Mm. And you can see he's like he he's just really took to it and mm. Yeah, so we, you know, and and when we've been up there, we fish. Me and Simon Priest have fished pairs matches up there mm. that his club have run. Always made us feel welcome and everything and that like. But a yeah, nice bloke, and a really bloke. nice bloke. Yeah, yeah, and you can just see his fishing's improved. He's obviously fished a lot in the past, mm. so it's just like re-triggering his skills that he's had before, like and that. But he's just like reminds me when I was, you know, like a kid, like hungry for knowledge sort of mm. thing and. Yeah, but really puts it into practice and that, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Simon, yeah. you do some brilliant work. You're an absolute credit to, to match fishing, and it's been a joy talking to you. Thank you, Tom. Cheers. Thanks, Thank you.